One of the things that they teach you in homiletics, the sermon class that you take in seminary, is how to look for what the key thing is, what the center of the story is. When we read the gospel, there are always many directions we could go in, but what's the main point? And for me, in this one, the main point is perhaps unexpected. I find it in that line, he knows not how. Now, obviously, the person that Jesus, the, the theoretical person Jesus is talking about is a farmer, and so it must have, must have seemed improbable to his original listeners as it does to us that he wouldn't know how agriculture works, that he wouldn't have spent enough time at it to have a sense of, well, okay, you plant the seeds and they grow, and, but I don't think that's necessarily what Jesus means. I don't think he's talking about the competence that comes with knowing just how to do the job because plainly the man knows how to do the job. He planted the seeds and later he harvests them. <clears throat> the clue to what Jesus actually means, I think, is in the second part of the story with the mustard seed. The seed doesn't have any consciousness of being a seed and the seed is perfectly beautiful as a seed. I'm sure you've seen that there are a, a crazy variety of seeds in terms of size and shape and color and texture and all these sorts of things. But the seed is only really fulfilled when the seed does what a seed is supposed to do, which is become something else. In other words, become what this weird translation of the Bible refers to as a shrub. I've seen pictures, I went looking for pictures of mustard plants, and some of them look like plants and some look like trees. I didn't see anything in the middle that would look like what you have in front of your house. In any event, uh, it, it, the seed's real purpose is somehow fulfilled only in its treeness in the same way that the farmer's purpose is only really fulfilled in his farmerness. It's only once the grain has grown up and the farmer goes in and cuts it down and is able to do something with it that he's really fulfilled his true purpose. It seems like it's only once the mustard tree has grown up and on the one hand produces more seeds so there can be more mustard plants but at the same time provides shelter for birds and whatever else may go on in its shade, that it truly finds its purpose. <clears throat> that, I think, is the clue for you and for me what both of these stories are trying to tell us. Yeah, we know how to do our job. We know how to be kind to people. We know how to uh, feed people. We know how to work for reconciliation among people. We know how to work for healing in the world. We know how to do all those things that have been put into our hearts. But it's somehow only with that we don't know how part that those things come together to be the building of the kingdom of God that Jesus is talking about. I think you and I have had that experience at one time or another in our lives that we go along doing those things that we're supposed to do, uh, building those relationships, working alongside people. I was talking to someone last week about how important it is for us just to show up sometimes. Particularly important for us as Episcopalians to show up and say, I don't have the answer, I can't buy you a solution to your problem, but I'm going to be here with you while we're doing it, whatever it turns out to be that fixes it. It's only when we do those things that somehow the I don't know how process happens and the kingdom of God is built. And at least in the, the, the fading present, if not in completely the rearview mirror, we're able to see the Holy Spirit being expressed in those times. <clears throat> in this, I think there's some encouragement that what we need to do is continue to do what it is that we do, to rise night and day, to plant the seed, to wait for the harvest to come, to be the seed that somehow will turn into something that we couldn't even imagine from where it begins, and yet where that potential has always been contained fully, if only we will be faithful. Keep doing those things, and somehow in the I don't know how part of the job, somehow in the Holy Spirit's part of the job, something bigger will happen, something more beautiful will happen, something more holy will happen. And then as the, past, as the present fades into the past, as we look in the rearview mirror, we will see that God has been at work among us even here and even now. Amen.